Garuda Linux is a knowledge based Linux distro that can be installed in a few clicks with a graphical installer. It has graphical programs for managing almost all system settings. The distro is optimized for desktop, multimedia and gaming performance, with the Linux Zen kernel, ZRAM, CPU scheduler, no hang and Anacity software. Battery fast file system with time shift creates regular snapshots of your system and gives you an ability to revert any system update if they cause any issue. It sounds like a distro I have always dreamed of. Let's find out in this video if it is indeed so great. When I checked the website of Garuda Linux, I became the most interested in two flavors of this distro, Garuda KDE Multimedia and Garuda Wayfire. But I was extremely disappointed with both these versions. So I decided to give Garuda Linux one more chance and install their flagship Garuda KDE Dragonized version. Luckily, it turned out to be better than its predecessors. Let me share with you my experience of using all three versions of Garuda Linux and I hope it will help you to decide if Garuda Linux is a distro you wanna try. And before we start, let me introduce you the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community. I recently finished the class Kubernetes 101. It is the best video on Kubernetes I have ever seen. Nigel Palton has done a fantastic job on presenting and explaining how Kubernetes works. This class helped me a lot in making my previous video on Kubernetes. There are many other fantastic stuff picked and Skillshare original videos. I am sure you will find something what you are interested in. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium to explore all these great videos. Garuda Linux is shipped with Calamers installer, which was recently introduced to Debian as I showed in my Debian review, and it is getting more and more popular. The installation is indeed very easy and smooth. I could only say that it is unusually long for Linux. And it was long for all three versions of Garuda Linux I tried. But if we ignore a little longer than usual installation time, Garuda KDE Multimedia and the other two versions of Garuda Linux installed fine. All my hardware, including the combo of Intel, Integrated Graphics and NVIDIA Graphics, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, everything was recognized out of the box. No issues, no complaints. Out of the box, you get a fully configured and customized desktop, including custom shell look. I really appreciate this attention to details by Garuda developers. The shell look is indeed very nice and it is also very efficient to use. Also, right after the installation, you are welcomed with the Garuda Setup Assistant, which guides you through the key post-installation steps. I was very pleased to see it, but I did not use it because I wanted to install some screen recorder software to record this Setup Assistant in action for this video. I tried to install simple screen recorder, but the installation failed, with some strange messages. Using the Garuda Assistant, I tried to install proprietary drivers and it failed with this error message. Next, I tried to update with a graphical program. It didn't work. Windows just quickly closed and I was not able to see what was wrong. So I decided to go to the bulletproof way, the terminal and the command line way to update my system. While the system was updating, I kept using it as I usually do. But the interface froze all the time. I simply could not use the system. It was not because of lack of resources. I have very powerful hardware for this test. I also checked the CPU usage. It was loaded only about 25%. I have seen many errors during the update process. It was obvious that something was not right with this distro. So after the update, I restarted my system and discovered that the interface is completely broke. Plasma 5 panels disappeared and Latidoc looked very differently than it was right after the installation. I decided to use the help of TimeShift and restore the very first automatic snapshot of the system. But it didn't help. Maybe TimeShift also broke, I don't know. This was a strong warning sign and I didn't want to use this distro more. There were many other smaller issues such as there was a Firefox icon in Latte but Firefox was not installed. But all these issues don't matter if the system is completely broke after the first update. 
I thought maybe it's just a problem of multimedia edition. Because they put together so many programs into one distro, so something could break. I gave a try to Garuda Wayfire Edition. Garuda Wayfire is claimed to be a distro with lightweight environment without sacrificing its appearance. It uses 3D Wayland Compositor inspired by Compis. I recall the time when Compis was a thing, everyone installed it to get wobbly windows and other fancy effects. You get that old Compis experience with the Wayfire desktop. Garuda Wayfire worked a little better than Garuda KDE Multimedia Edition, but it had its problems too. The first thing I noticed was that the Files app doesn't open from the panel. When I click it, nothing happens. But it opens fine from the menu. Text files in the home directory don't open with double click. Even if you use Open With, nothing happens. You need to open a text editor and use the open function to open a txt file. This is already a major usability problem. Unfortunately, Garuda Wayfire also had problems with installing NVIDIA proprietary drivers. Of course, one could use a command line and fix all these errors and install the drivers. But the whole point of using Garuda Linux is to get everything sold with the graphical programs of Garuda Assistant app, which doesn't work. It was my first experience with the Wayfire desktop. It is quite appealing visually, but functionally it needs more improvements. For example, this top panel is not very functional, it only displays the information. It took me some time to find out how to configure Wi-Fi. You need to open the Conman app to set up Wi-Fi. This three panel is also very limited. You can change the volume, but you cannot mute unmute. Sound is muted by default in Garuda Linux, and you need to open Pulse Audio settings to unmute it. One of the tests I did was to play some video files, and Garuda Wayfire uses Celluloid as a video player. To my surprise, Celluloid crashed the whole desktop. And it wasn't just one case, it crashed every time I tried to open any video file. So I could accept if some apps crash, and this happens to any operating system, but when an app crashes the whole desktop, this makes system extremely unreliable. However, I installed VLC, and VLC works fine. So it was enough for me to stop using Garuda Wayfire at this point. Ok, I thought these Garuda distros were secondary editions. Maybe their main distro, Garuda KDE Dragonized, is more polished and works better. I decided to give one more try to Garuda Linux with their flagship KDE Dragonized Edition. To my surprise, everything worked just as it should. After the installation, I followed the setup assistant, the system updated successfully, it also installed proprietary drivers automatically, all Garuda Assistant tools work without issues. I tried all Garuda graphical programs for system settings, everything worked fine. I only didn't try gaming tools, I'm not a gamer and I'm not interested in these tools, and I also think I cannot give a proper assessment of gaming experience. But I have tested the regular usage of this desktop quite extensively. So the desktop theme is looking nice and it has many fancy effects such as blurred background, transparency and everything alike. Unfortunately, I find it too distracting during work. For example, when I was taking notes for this review, I often pasted the text as unformatted text, and this would darken and make transparent the whole LibreOffice app except for this small window. I got tired of this effect very quickly, it really kind of distracts your attention when it does it. Also, one of the main selling points of Garuda Linux is its performance and optimization. But I didn't feel any of that. It was even the opposite to some extent. For example, the boot time in Garuda Linux is very long. I run KDE Neon on the same machine and it boots noticeably faster. While with Garuda Linux, I can answer one or two YouTube comments with my phone while the system is booting. Shutdown is also longer than in other Linux distros. Maybe Garuda Linux has an edge on gaming, but as I said before, I did not test that. I also think it is bloated with software. Many apps are duplicated. For example, there is Kate Text Editor, and there is Micro. There is Console, and there is Avacrity Terminal app. 
There are also many specific apps which I believe will never be used by an average Linux user. However, there are some fantastic apps pre-installed. For example, I discovered for myself Flameshot, a very feature-rich screenshot tool. I also like that they recommend SM Player for a video player. It is my favorite video player for Plasma 5 desktop. My conclusion, if you want to try Garuda Linux, use only Garuda Linux Dragonized Edition. But it is not a dream distro. I think other distros that may not have special kernel or many optimization apps deliver similar or even better performance experience. Maybe it's because they are better balanced, Garuda Linux has too many apps, and maybe it's over-optimized. Also, as I said in my Manjaro review, I believe that Arch Linux needs to be as minimal as possible, to keep it stable and get maximum performance. And the only way to get that experience is to install vanilla Arch Linux. There is a video guide on how to install Arch Linux if you have never installed it. It's on your screen right now. However, I would recommend Garuda Linux if you want to try something new. Let's say you are bored with other Linux distros or you are a distro hopper. Try Garuda Linux. It is very unusual and interesting Linux distro. I quite enjoyed exploring Garuda Linux, but I would not use it on daily basis. Thank you for watching.